Hey everyone, Raj Sahu here, realtor in Central Texas, back with another model home walkthrough. Today we're going through the Kennedy plan with Chesmar Homes. This home is over 3,200 square feet. It has four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, and I'm excited to show you all the high-end design that's throughout this home. We'll go room by room in detail, including right here in the kitchen, but I have to first show you one more time a close-up look at the cathedral style ceilings. So good to see this in a living room on a one-story plan. I think it opens up the space so much and really makes the home feel so unique compared to other builders. We're gonna start right here in the kitchen, and I love the design work that they did here where they have the light brown cabinets, they have a butler's pantry on the left side, and they kept this L-shaped island as white with a black accent wall next to these bar stools. Now that black accent wall was put in there on purpose because it pulls from the different design elements that are here in this kitchen. Like take a look at these very cool pendant lights that are above the L-shaped island. And then notice the hardware on the cabinets is dark. The cabinets themselves have some dark touches within them. And so that black accent wall is pulling from these small, subtle dark touches within this kitchen. That same high-end design work continues here with this designer vent hood that has a cabinet overlay going all the way up to the ceiling. I love the movement of the backsplash in here. It does have some touches of that yellow brown color that's also pulling from the cabinets. And so as you see here, everything coordinates so well from a design perspective in this kitchen. And I also love the position of this kitchen. I think this is where an L-shaped island can really work when you have a living room in front of you, when you have a dining room to the right of you, and then even behind me, opposite of the dining room wall, is going to be a study and a media room. And we'll see all of that in detail later on in the video. What I wanna to get to next is the living room. Before we get there, I'll just give you a quick look at the pantry, which I would say is a fairly typical size around this square footage. Now heading over to the living room, what I wanna point out here of all things is going to be the furniture because we've already shown the cathedral style ceilings. Yes, that definitely opens up the space. I think it's amazing. What also opens it up is this low profile sectional with a chase in the back. And this furniture I think makes a big difference, especially in a room like this, the living room that is surrounded by other rooms. So in the back right, we have two bedrooms that we'll get to in the back left, we have the primary bedroom. Obviously we have sliding glass doors right back here that go to the patio and we're just surrounded by rooms. And so you need open walkways in this living room to get to all these various rooms. And I think having a low profile sofa like this, along with the chase that goes out to the back patio, keeps everything so open. And I point this out because I've walked a similar plan like this as a resale home. And in that home, they had a big bulky couch in this living room. And that living room, just like this, was surrounded by other rooms you had to get out to. And my client said it felt so small. But then we walked that same plan as a model home that had great design like this. And they said, wow, everything feels so open in here. And I remember laughing saying, that's design and furniture playing a big factor. And when we looked at the differences between the two, it was 100% the furniture that was in the home. Moving on, we are in the back patio. I like the floor tile that they did here in the patio. And we have this backyard that opens up to this field. And we are in a community called Blackhawk. It's in Pflugerville, Texas, which is a suburb northeast of Austin, Texas. And while we're in the backyard, I'll mention two things here. First, lot sizes can be very different from each other. I just had somebody contract in this neighborhood two weeks ago and their backyard is twice the size of this. So lots can definitely vary. Second, if you are looking at a forever home, and I would say forever home ballpark would be at least a 60 foot wide lot or up and at least 3000 square feet and up, it's tough to find new construction options like that in a suburb like Pflugerville other than this community, Blackhawk. And while we're in the primary bedroom, we'll see the primary bathroom next. I'll just finish by saying, that's why I like communities like Blackhawk. 
you don't have to buy a high square footage plan over 3,000 square feet or buy a forever home, but it just feels great to be in a community where people buy there and at a high probability they stay there long term. Rather than the opposite of that where it's just a bunch of starter homes and people tend to move or turn them into rentals and then neighborhoods like that feel so much more transitory where you meet your neighbors and then they're gone the next year and there's this constant revolving door of people in and out of your community. And that's why I like touring forever home communities and featuring them on my channel. And that's what I'll continue to do because I think the livability is so high in areas like this. Moving on, we are in the primary bathroom. I love the design work that they did in here. It still has that black and brown look with the same cabinets that we saw in the kitchen, the black hardware, and they even did this very cool accent wall above the freestanding tub. And take a look at the artwork that's on this accent wall as well. Everything has touches of white, black, and that goldish brown look. And I think when walking through model homes like this, it's so easy to get inspired for design. And that's what I always recommend my clients. Walk through these homes, look at the videos, get inspired, and try to get a taste of the color patterns that they're using that you really like. For example, I just had a client close in their home that used the same shower wall tile, that white tile that has some movement in it, and then they had a bunch of touches of black in their bathroom to contrast that white, and I think it came out so well. And I'm actually gonna be posting a video of that home on my channel in a week or two, so definitely be on the lookout for that. Moving on, we are in the primary closet. I like the room that's in here. They even fit a third row all the way up at the ceiling for another rod. Uh, it'd be tough to get up there, but I'm sure there's some sort of tool or I don't know what you would call it, but something to, to get clothing all the way up there on that third row. Now, people always ask me, is that what we typically see in a closet from the builder? And the answer is yes. Usually it's just a bunch of shelves and rods, but definitely double check that with the builder. And then if you wanted a third party closet build out, like to have built-ins and make that space much more usable, there are plenty of companies that can do that for you after closing. Uh, in fact, I have another client who just closed on their home last month. They just did their closet built out and I'll also get a video of their home and post it to my channel. So stay tuned, lots of videos coming, lots of clients closing, lots of homes to see. Moving on, we are in the study. I love the accent wall that they did here with the floating shelves. This makes for the perfect Zoom background. So if you do a lot of virtual meetings, I think you can use this as a great example of how you can design your background or what's behind you when you're meeting virtually. I also love the flow of this space. So as soon as you exit the study, you're met with this massive living area that feels so open. And I think you get that feeling after you exit almost every single room in this home. And that's the special part of this one story plan. It's It's got all these areas that are very private, but it still feels very open. And that combination continues here in the media room. Take a look at how large this couch is in this room. It's huge. There's so much seating in here. I love the paint accent that they did with the stripe across the back wall. And then the rest of the walls are this dark tone. I have a lot of people doing this in their media room, game room, just so that if you enjoy a movie after a long day of work, it's nice to just come into a space that feels very calm. And I think darkening the walls can really help with that. Now that same design continues in this dining room where almost every wall is an accent wall, right? I love the wood touches that they have in here. It's a large eight seater table in this dining room with this very cool light fixture above it. You have great windows on the side wall, bringing in tons of natural light. And again, we keep talking about every area feeling private from each other, but it's still feeling very open. Like even if you just sit here, you're wide open to that kitchen area, living room, everything is still open to each other. And I continue to highlight that in this one story plan because most one story plans do not feel like this. I've walked so many homes with buyers and I've had buyers tell me on a one story, it feels so small for the square footage number that I was expecting it to feel bigger. And the answer of why they get that feeling is a lot of one-story plans waste square footage with hallways. You have so many different hallways, it almost feels like a maze to get to every room. And that's just a waste of square footage because that's livable square footage, even though it's a hallway, it counts in that number. And that can make homes feel very tiny where the rooms don't feel as big because a lot of the square footage is allotted to the hallways. Moving on, we are in the two spare bedrooms that are in the back right of the home. So we have this bedroom that has a Jack and Jill full bathroom that's gonna lead to another bedroom. 
And while we go through this, I did talk a lot about Blackhawk, the community that we're in. If you stay towards the end of the video, I'll take my drone up in the air above this home and I'll show you the lots that are for sale and also a little bit about the community. So definitely stick around for that. Uh, this is gonna be that second bedroom that's in the back right of the home. I like that everything's private from each other. So if you look at this home from the street, you have a primary bedroom in the back left. You have these two bedrooms that we walk through in the back right. We have another bedroom that's private from everything else and that has a good amount of space in there and that's gonna be in the front right of the home. So everything's very private. And again, that living room kitchen area keeps everything very open and it's the center point of this home. Now, while we head over to the front of the home and I'll show you the rest here. And then again, I'll, I'll show you that drone shot that shows you this community. What I wanna talk about next is the market. So people keep asking me, is now the right time to buy or should they wait? And my answer is very simple. You need to work with somebody who knows the supply and demand for your criteria and how that supply and demand is expecting to shift over the next three to six months. And I'll give you an example of that. I have a client who has criteria. And when I say criteria, I mean square footage, price point, areas of interest that you wanna buy into. Uh, for that specific client, there's two communities that are launching next month that are gonna fit exactly what they're looking for. And that's gonna increase supply drastically in their area of interest. So I'm telling them that they should wait. There's gonna be more options very soon. It doesn't make sense to buy right now. And while we go through this bedroom with a full bathroom, we'll see a utility room after this and then a powder bathroom, I wanna give you the other side of the coin because I've also had a client just a couple months ago, they were looking at a very specific builder in a community that had beautiful views and I know that area really well. There isn't anything else coming up in the near future. Even if there was a builder that bought land, let's say today, it would take so long to build out in that area because the, there's a lot of topography. It's very complex to build in that area. So anyway, I had a builder that made two sales the month before we were looking at them, three sales the month before that. And so to spark sales, they increase incentives drastically. So in the current month that we were looking at them, they had made five sales just in the last week. So I remember looking at my buyers saying, hey, they made five sales over the last two months, but now that incentives have increased, they just made five sales in the last week. So if we want that incentive, we want to buy in this community, now would be a great time. And they ended up buying and a week later, the builder decreased incentives by $40,000. And guess what? Nobody's talking about it. Nobody sees that as an increase because it's not tracked in any data. It's just something that you need to speak with a realtor about. So my point is reach out to me. My info's in the description of this video. And if I think I'm the best realtor for you, I'll let you know if I think there's somebody else that's better, I'll refer you. Now I did tell you, I want to show you some of these lots. So this is the model home that we just walked with Chesmar. They have this open field in the back that will eventually be more homes in a new section in Blackhawk. But at this time, that new section won't be coming up for quite a while. So at the time of this recording, we're looking at about a year as a rough ballpark of when they'll have new lots again. And that's why I just had a client contract a couple weeks ago because that was the time to get in. In fact, that was one of the few lots we could do like a three car garage because there was enough space for it. Now there aren't any more lots with that specific builder to do a three car garage. And by the way, that was on a 4,700 square foot home where I think a three car garage is very important. I think most buyers buying in at that square footage are expecting a three car garage. So that's where I, we were talking about timing. I told my clients that this is gonna be a good opportunity and I don't see anything better coming out in this beautiful community anytime soon. Now, speaking of this community, as you can tell, it's massive. Blackhawk is one of the biggest communities in Pflugerville. And as you'll see here, they still have some ponds, some areas that you can walk around. They have amenities inside the community. They have schools very close by, some that are also in the community. Everything is very well thought out, hence why I like going through these master plan communities. They're very livable because everything's been planned well ahead of time before they even start building anything. Now, if you did want to see the floor plan that my client just contracted on in this community, click in the thumbnail that's appeared on your screen. And then if you are looking at real estate in the central Texas area, reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. And my info is in the description of this video. Now, I did want to hear from you. Comment below on what your favorite part of this home was. Was there anything from the design that you absolutely love? I want to hear from you in the comments. And as always, hope this helps. Take care, everyone.